wonderful. Uh, so you, you having a, uh, a good uh, start of the day so far, though? Yes, so far we're good. So That's fantastic. Good. Excellent. All right, Brenda, so uh, describe yourself in one word. Uh, I'm an award-winning author. Well, well, one word. No, one word. That's okay. <laughs> author. Yeah, fantastic. So now, Brenda, describe your writing style. I'm a pantser. I'm a pantser. I do not outline my books. I go by the seat of my pants. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. I do. I never know what's going to happen in the next chapter until I start writing it. So very spontaneous. Very spontaneous. Yes. My so, characters write the story. So if you would if you would try to plan something, it wouldn't come out the way you would want it to. No, I've tried that before and it doesn't work for me. No, it doesn't work for me. Usually it'll be a three o'clock in the morning idea and it'll be, oh, that's where it goes next. Yeah. 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 I, th I think that's good, though. I, I, I think a lot of creative people are that way. If, if they try to be more analytical, it, 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 it doesn't function. It, it doesn't work. It, yeah. it has to flow and the characters have to take over the story. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Now, if you were to write a book today, Brenda, what would you call it, and what would the subject matter be on? Uh, well, I'm actually working on a book now. Ah, excellent. And, yeah, I'm working on a book now, and it is set in uh, the Big Cypress National Res uh, Preservation down near the Everglades. And I like working on things that are actually happening here in Florida. So this one, uh, the working title is Panther Tracks, and it involves the panther and the, um, it's very convoluted because it's a mystery suspense thing. And so it involves the panther, the, um, there's a ghost orchid, orchid down there that is protected and somebody's trying to uh, traffic in the ghost orchid and things like that. So very environmental yes. things at the moment are interesting me. So you actually have done some real research then on that area. Yeah, I, I spend a lot more time researching than I actually do yes. writing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because you're actually bringing in true facts. Yes, yes, I do. I get a lot of my information from uh, newspaper articles, timely in, uh, newspaper articles uh, from the Florida Wildlife Conservation website. Excellent. And, um, and uh, maybe an overheard conversation that deals with something that has happened here in Florida in my area. And it sets my little mind going. Oh, and absolutely. And that's where I take off from. Well, yeah. plus, too, and I think it's, you know, very... Uh, important and critical information that is truly happening. Yes, yes. Uh, that's that's where my mind seems to set, is things that are actually happening that I want my readers to know about, but I put a nice little fictional story around it so that they're being entertained, but at the same time, they're getting information about something that I think is important to know. That's right. Excellent. Now, you know, when you're, when you're, of writing your books and you're gathering all your information and stuff. Do you ever keep it? At, even when the book is published, do you keep all that information you collected? Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do two of my books. Well, I keep everything on the computer anyways. Yes. But two of my books I have turned into PowerPoint presentations mm -hmm. that I can take out to book clubs and libraries and things like that that the research information goes back into um, history. And I like to do that for power, uh, for book clubs and libraries. That yeah, that's, like that's a, that. a, I think a critical thing that you just mentioned, because I, I actually never thought of that either, that the, yeah. using the PowerPoint. Oh, I, like, I love doing that. I love doing that, yeah. You know, especially very, like- Very, very good stuff, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, especially yeah. for your presentations. You know, it, it's yeah. something I think when authors write a book, they think their journey is finished. No, but it's no, not. never, never, 
never. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's always something that you can make out of that book to go out into the public to show them what you've done and why you've done it. That that yeah. is excellent advice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, how did your grandson inspire you to start writing the Hayden book series? Now, oh. and this is a four book series, correct? Yeah, my my Hayden books. Yeah, uh, yeah. It started out as four. I think Hayden books are four books, and he was about three years old, I think, when I started. He's go. He's going to be fifteen next. Oh my gosh! Next month. I can't <laughs> believe it. Time flies. I know, and uh, um, he <laughs> was uh, discovering things, and he discovered. Well, one of them was uh, Hayden's Halloween. And he loves Halloween. So I had to write a little book about Halloween. And uh, he was discovering that the butterflies, when they crash land on the patio, they leave their wings behind. So he was out there with a little magnifying glass inspecting their little wings on the patio. So um, I did a little book about Hayden and Fred. And he... In the book, the little boy brings Hayden, Hayden, the little boy, brings home a caterpillar in a glass jar. And he has to take care of the caterpillar until it turns into a butterfly and then release the butterfly. And him and grandma decide they're going to grow a butterfly garden in front of the, the porch. So it, it's all, oh, and the other one was, um, um, uh, oh, I can't think of the name. <laughs> and it's like, really, write the darn things. And um, Hayden and the Honey Farm. And Hayden fell in love with honey one year. So I had to write a book about how the honey gets from the hive into the jar in a very simple way for a child. And always in the back of the book, I put a website so that the kids can go beyond the book mm -hmm. into the computer to find out more about whatever creature it might be. And sometimes I put a recipe like uh, grandma's honey cookie recipe. Excellent. Or in the, or whatever, to go beyond the book with the reader to engage and put that connection there. That's right. I like that. I like that. That yeah. is excellent. Yeah. It's not like just that. the the moment of the book and then it's yeah, finished it's, you continue it's going it. beyond it's going beyond and and the the other one was um about the uh, farmer's market and hayden's garden was uh at, about the farmer's market and hayden loved the farmer's market so <laughs> we'd go down there and he'd always find he was amazed by beets and radishes and things like that so taking the kid to the farmer's market and just asking them questions about how who grows this how do they get there you know things like that there's such a conversation you can have with your child just going to the farmer's Absolutely. market yes. you know and yes. if they find something at the farmer's market that they haven't had before they're much more likely to try it that's right you know? yeah so, so, so so did grandma actually pursue all those adventures Oh, yes. Awesome. Yes. Oh, definitely. Yes. We had some amazing trips out. Yeah. We still do. Good. We still Keep do. that going. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, that, that is so critical to be connected with nature. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because yeah. you can definitely, at any age, learn so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. that's awesome. Now, now, did you find it easy, Brenda, to... Uh, when you to write your first children's book, was it easy for you to do that? <laughs> Actually, yes, it was. Okay. Um, I, I went, it, it, I don't know how much time you have. Um, I went to a friend's house uh, July uh, 4th to watch the fireworks go off. And she had written a little story about her granddaughter and uh, a lion, much on the idea of Androcles and the lion. And it was okay. It was neat. And I came home and I tend to be a bit competitive. <laughs> so the next day I wrote my first story, Just Batty, about a little boy who, who learns about bats in school, Hayden. And he wanted to find a way to, to help the bats survive because, of course, everything is on our planet is dying. 
And so he, his father and mother helped him put up a bat box on the family farm. And so I uh, wanted to find out, well, how do you go about publishing this stuff? And uh, that was my very first book. That was my very first book. I wrote it on a Sunday afternoon and I had to find out how do you go about finding an illustrator and all that yes. sort of stuff. So that was my very first book. So it was a challenge to myself to find out how do you do this? So, so when, yeah, so when you, to where you are today in that very first book, when you look at that first book, can you can you say, well, I should have did it this way, or I, I actually had to have the illustrations redone because the very first illustrations were actually dreadful, oh. and um, I found out that there was misspellings in the book and everything because I went through an online publisher that would you know they would print anything you sent them. It was a vanity press. I did yeah. it all wrong. <laughs> but I learned. You learned. I yeah. learned. I learned. And so now it, it's a beautiful, lovely little book, and it's still selling. That's for fantastic. All these years. So that's, that's, I'm very happy with it now. Yeah, that, that's such a good feeling, though, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes. You know, Even how, how horrible it was when I got it first in my hot little hands. <laughs> I'm a published author. Yeah, I was exactly. Excited. Yes. Yeah, yes. That, that's, I mean, that, that's, such, that's such a huge feeling you know as yeah. is, as well even a experienced author you know yeah. you 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 put all your blood sweat and tears into this this piece that you're working on and yeah. then you get it in the mail and you're holding it, it's like holy cow i did this yeah you yeah. know and yeah. especially the, the 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 biggest reward too is that someone actually says i like to buy it yeah you yeah. know yeah i mean that that's 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 just goes beyond what you ever dreamt of you know yeah yeah. That someone else is interested in the same thing, and then I yes. created it, and they really like it. Yes, yes. You know that that's 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 wonderful. Now, Brenda, yeah. now you have written eight children's books. Yeah. Eleven novels. Yeah. Think, and yeah. now, now, what genre did you find more challenging to write? It's the uh, I think the novels are more challenging. Um, I like doing the novels better than the children's books because they don't cost me as much oh. as I don't have to <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do like the novels. I do like the novels. I okay. like the research of the novels. Okay, yes. Yeah, I do enjoy the research. And they do take me about a year, year and a half to write. And But I can get more satisfaction out of writing a novel. And because I know that I am informing my readers about something that I feel is important. Okay. And it's in my local area that people don't know about. You know, that it's an obscure thing, but it's an important thing. Right. right. They don't know about. And uh, so that I, I enjoy my novels. I enjoy my novels. I think, are you more connected with the novels? Yes, yes. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Now, yeah. now with, like, with the book sales of like the children's books and the novels, do you feel like the novels sort of outdo the? The, the novels outsell them ten yeah. to one. Oh, they do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, very much so, especially here in Florida because uh, uh, grandparents buy children's books. Yes. Parents do not buy children's books. Oh. It, it's really, really weird. Um, when I, I go out to a lot of events and the children are not at the events, it's grandparents. Okay. It's okay. grandparents. So that that's yeah. kind of why. That's kind of why. The parents might go to Barnes and Noble or um, Walmart or something and pick up the pick up their books there but they don't come to the events like the craft fairs and things right. like that. it's yeah. all the uh in florida we have the snowbirds and it's the snowbirds the grandparents that are picking up the books so that's sort so. of like the cycle <laughs> yeah yeah uh, that's the cycle yeah. okay so brenda let's talk about hayden and fred <laughs> hayden, and fred. <laughs> hayden and fred yeah 
Yeah. So so what 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 about that those that book about those two? They, they're on an adventure, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Hayden and Fred. Hay, uh, Hayden brings home Fred in a little <laughs> jar from school. Yeah. And they, uh, Grandma and Hayden, have to sit with the the computer and they have to find out what kind of vegetation that the caterpillar needs to survive. They have to find out, they have to learn what kind of caterpillar he is and what he's going to turn into, what kind of vegetation he needs. They have to go out to the pasture to find the vegetation he needs. And they have to keep him healthy and get him to a point where he's going to be able to turn into a pupa, a chrysalis, and turn into a butterfly and watch him as he climbs up to the edge of the, the jar, sit there, pump his wings, and get ready to fly. And I thought that was, that is exactly the way it works, in a very simple way. Right. And then in the back of the book, I have a link so that the kids can order their own uh, butterfly kit, and they can order the the caterpillars and watch them turn into their own butterflies. Oh, that is fantastic, Brenda. Yeah. Now, how yeah. did how did you um, uh, connect that, or how how who who do you have to, uh, or who did you have to connect with to, like, if someone bought your book, they can, they have to go to like a website to a website. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and then then do they have to pay? For that, they have, okay. They have to pay for the butterfly kit. They have to order it online. Yeah. But that option is there. The option is there. Yeah. And it's a learning experience for oh. the kid when they get that kit and they hang hang it up somewhere outside, or maybe in in a uh, on the lanai or somewhere sheltered. They can watch as this creature develops. That, that, and it's a nice little learning experience. I like kids to learn. I oh, like yeah. kids to learn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, that, that's something that's so educational and and not just, well, informative, but also to actually see that process work. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I homeschool my grandson. So okay. um, I'm always, uh, I want kids to learn. I want them to do stuff. You yes. know, not just sit there and play games on the stupid machines, you know, and the tablets and stuff. You know, like they always say, you know, stop and smell the roses. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. you know, as, as life is today and, you know, myself even growing up, I mean, there's, you know, obviously we didn't have all this stuff then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you go out and you create. Yes. Create yes. the fun. And, and nature's, I mean, it's, it's always there for you to, to, to learn. Yes, you know? yes, yes, and, yes. And uh, it's it's, you know, it, I I hope to God that still in another twenty years from now, that yeah. you know it, it's not here. You know. Yeah. No, you you've got to get the the ki the kids out there and experiencing life. That's right. And the world, and not just isolate them to a machine. Yeah. It, you need to take them to the art galleries and the museums and the, right. the animal farms and things like that and just get them outside. Or even too, you know, <laughs> you know, just, just going to, you know, an, an apple farm, picking apples, blueberries. Yeah. yeah. Just, Whatever just go it out is. there and be connected. Yeah, we've we've gone out and picked blueberries and raspberries and whatever's growing during the season. Yes. And, yeah, to the state parks and, and whatever. Oh, I, I got to tell, I'm sorry, I, okay. I tend to wander, but um, we went to, the, there's a little park near us, and we found a praying mantis in the grass, and uh, I thought it would be so clever of me to pick up the praying mantis, <laughs> but it ran up my arm, and you've never heard Grandma yell so hard. And swing my Good arm. example, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, you know, that, that there was years ago, I was at my grandparents' house, too, and they had the weeping willow trees. Oh, yeah. And and uh, and I remember looking at, at something that was moving in the tree. 
and, and, I, and I was like staring at it, and to me, the thing was huge. And it, and it was, I believe, a, a, the walking stick. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I had no idea what that thing was. And that thing would like, like scared me out of the, you know, but, but that's what it was. It was a walking stick. It just blended right in with the tree. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that, that was, that was pretty wild. Um, yeah. Now, now this book seems very interesting. It's Sailing Way to Nod. Oh, yes. Yes. Hey, would you like that, to talk about that, please? That is, I, I got to say that is one of my favorites of the children's books. Uh, Hayden has, uh, he still has a problem actually going to bed and going to sleep at night. And Sailing Away to Nod is uh, actually going to bed at night. Sailing Away to Nod is the land of dreams. And so uh, it's a little boy who sails away to Nod to the land of dreams. And he meets a giant, a princess, and a dwarf. And along the way, uh, when he lands, he's picked up some uh, some items off the beach. And as he meets these different characters, he gives them these little things, so whether it's a seashell, some sea glass, uh, some stones. And along the way, he shares these items with these characters and through this sharing they all become friends in the end and the giant has stolen i don't want to tell the whole story no. <laughs> but the, the giant has stolen the dwarfs chickens and cow and his honeybees and the giant has gotten stung all over the place and is sat there crying under a tree because he's been stung so many times. And the little boy says, well, if you return all the things <laughs> that you've stolen, maybe the dwarf will help you. So he returns all the things that he's stolen and says he's sorry. And then they meet the princess up by the castle. And she's a nasty little piece of work in the beginning. <laughs> It sounds like the art, of a, uh, the art of the art of negotiations already. Yeah, <laughs> and she wants some honey. Well, light dawns, and they go back down, and they bring the princess some honey. And now she's she's kind of nice now that she's gotten her honey. And they sit down and they start sharing all their little bits and pieces. So it's a little lesson on. It doesn't matter if you're big or small, rich or poor. If you sit down together and share, you can all be friends. Now, that one I'm very, very proud of. It won an award with the Florida Authors and Publishers Association, and it's also won two international awards. Oh, congratulations. So very, very proud of that one. Absolutely, and you should very be. Proud of that one. Yeah. You know, it has a wonderful message, messages yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, very proud of that one. And the illustrations, those illustrations are by uh, Jacqueline Paskey Gill, and they are, all my illustrations are by her, Jacqueline Paskey Gill, and they're, they're in watercolor this time, so they're softer. Oh, nice. And, and more, you know, on the dream type theme. And she's done a fantastic job with those. Yeah, oh. really, really nice. Yeah. yeah, watercolor. Now, do you have, do you keep the originals? The uh, I have them in my computer. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, you have a five novel mystery series called Green Lady Inn. Yes, yes. Now, the, yes. The, the first one, I believe, is The Broken Branches? Broken Branches. That was my first adult novel venture, yes. And I'm a little Boston girl. So that, um, that one is set in Salem, Massachusetts. And no witches included. <laughs> I always have to say that. Uh, a young lady is having clairvoyant visions. And it helps her little group solve crimes often getting in the way of the local police department. And um, she is receiving messages through the ether 
from a long dead ancestor, 150 years dead. And she has to un, uh, unscramble these very cryptic messages to figure out what she's being, what these messages mean, and to solve the crimes. And she is, in the first book, she's trying to figure, uh, follow clues left 150 years before to find a lost family treasure. And that's the whole setup. Uh, it's a um, she at the reading of her grandmother's will. She is giving given a emerald set clatter ring uh, because it's an Irish because uh, I'm Irish and I believe it's folks. <laughs> and so that sets yeah. her off starting to receive these messages and these feelings of uh, past times she starts to get these illusions and feelings of things in the past and stuff. And uh, she inherits her grandmother's building, which she turned house, which she turns into the Green Lady Inn. Okay. And uh, so that's the way that And, and then, then it goes right into the whispers in time. Whispers in time is how she is, you know, getting more and more of these messages and that one is an art theft in a neighboring town. And the art that all of the bad guys seem to be residents of the inn, <laughs> guests <laughs> of the inn, <laughs> for some reason or other. <laughs> and she uh, is getting more and more of these messages. And um, yeah, <laughs> I love this series because I, it, it's not, it's uh, paranormal mysteries. And so yeah. I've got ghosties in there that are showing up and taking residence in the inn. One of the rooms becomes occupied by this long dead ancestor <laughs> and, and stuff like that. That's so it's, wonderful. it's really a cute, cute series. And uh, I really enjoyed it because I can do anything I want. That's right. Yeah, I, I bet you, you had a blast with this one. I did. I really did. Yeah, because yeah. then it goes into hidden assets, the spell box, and then the foragers. Yeah, the, the spell box was good, too, because uh, her husband buys her a witch's spell box in Boston, not knowing that a jewel thief has hidden stolen diamonds in a secret drawer in the spell box and is coming to the green lady in to retrieve his mm. stolen goods and so that was a good one too oh, yeah. that was a good one too and uh the rob the thief is uh not a professional thief it was just a spur of the moment thing and so he's really not, you know, that intelligent as to what he's trying to do here. So that was good, too. That was good, too. And um, uh, the... Uh, Forger's the palette. First ghost, yeah, the first ghost, Lucinda, her husband now shows up, and he's dead, too. And so together, they start sending messages <laughs> to poor old Megan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, you so, know th this series actually could have really just just kept going it could have kept going but in the uh in the for uh the forges palette which was about an art forger mm -hmm. i decided enough was enough and i got the uh the two ghosts together and i decided it was time for them to cross over so they did their bit and they crossed over. So that was okay. But um, Megan's daughter, Elizabeth, she was two at this time. She was starting to have uh, some clairvoyance in her show up. And she was starting to talk to the fuzzy lady in the wall. So we, <laughs> we decided it was time for the ghost to depart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as the creator, you can do that, right? I can do that. <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun. That's it awesome. was a lot of That's fun. That's great. Now, yeah. now, Brenda, you're not just an author. You're also a Braden River consulting. 
which you are yes. a publishing and marketing consultant. Yes. And now for now these are for just authors. Now, yes. can you could talk about your um your business, please? Yeah, um I found that there was a lot of uh new authors out there that had really gotten themselves in a bit of a mess and really didn't know what they were doing or how to get published or uh what have you. So I was I had been helping them for years, but I decided I really needed to do this on a more professional basis. So I created Braden River Consulting. And I've been doing that for three years now as a proper business. And I take people that have really made a mess of things sometimes, mm -hmm. or d really don't know what they're doing. And uh, I had a lady that uh, she had created a children's book and taken it to a printer and it really wasn't done right and there was no way she could sell it on amazon or anything and she wanted to sell it on amazon there was no way you could do it that way so i had to take it recreate the book for her mm. and get it up on amazon for her so it's things like that that i have to do or they'll have, uh, like I say, taken it to a printer yes. and we have to get new ISBN numbers, recreate the book and get it published so that it can go for sale up on Amazon. So I use either Amazon, which is Kindle Direct Publishing, yes. or I use uh, Ingram Spark, which is another pu uh, publishing outfit. And, or they can take what, take the files I create for them and go to any publisher they want. It, once I do it, it's their files. They take it anywhere they want. I can advise, right. but they take them anywhere they want to go. And the basic question I always ask them is, what is your goal with this book? Do you want just a few copies for family and friends? Or do you want it on the shelves of Barnes & Noble? Right. And that determines what their, uh, how much skin in the game they have, you know, what they want with it, what, excuse me, whether they want it professionally edited or that they just want me to go over it. And I've got an editing program that I can run it through to get it as clean as I can get it. Right. Excuse me, and things like that. You know, what do, how professional do they want it? You know, because some don't have a lot of money to play with and they just want to see it, you know, a, a maybe just a memoir for family and friends. Right. Or they yeah. want to be able to go out to events and sell this to people and get it onto Barnes and Noble. So, yeah. Now, do you also, Brenda, like provide like the graphics? <laughs> Or like graphics and stuff, or to, uh, you don't. I have I have a list of illustrators that I can send them to. I have uh, formatters that I can send them to. Book design, uh, book cover designers, I can send them to. It all depends on what they need. Yes. I can I can design covers, very basic covers. If they just want a basic cover, I can design basic covers. It depends on how much they want to to put into this right yeah. yes yeah because i'm a poor struggling author i know what it's like to put money into this and usually the people i get don't have a lot of money they've already done the stupid stuff and paid for it so i know that they don't have a lot so have, have, have like have you noticed though with uh if, if or do you get more people that want to be a self-publisher or do they pursue being having a publisher too? Most everybody I get wants self-published. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm self-published and that's how I, um, I get the self-published authors. If they want to go traditional, I can get them to the point where they can take that manuscript and go hunting agents. Okay. Yeah, now, now, if they want to. Have you ever thought of that? Uh, I did with the alligator dance and I put that out to uh, several agents and nobody wanted it. So mm. I said to heck with it and I self-published it 
I uh, put that out for three years and nobody wanted it. Mm. So I self-published it and I'm happy. Good. I'm happy. Yep. My readers are happy. Well, that that's yep. what it's yep. all. That's what it's about. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yep. Yeah. What now, now, about. now, Brenda, you you also have a uh, a website, um, or do you have a website? I have two websites. Yes. Uh, okay, excellent. Uh, and and yep. what and what are your websites, Brenda? Okay, my author's website is uh, www. Uh, Brenda Spalding Author dot com. And my business website is BradenRiverConsulting.com. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Now, so, now, Brenda, when is your next event? Uh, my next event is November 2nd. I will be down in Sarasota at Five Points Park. That's down near the Selby Library in Sarasota. And that is running from 10 to 5 o'clock. Nice. And that is uh, basically they call it a French market, but there will be a couple authors down there. I will be down there with Lucy Tobias, who does uh, travel and uh, gardening in Florida. She's fantastic. And Janelle Havlin, she has some fantastic Florida history and mystery novels down there. And the rest will be jewelry and art and ceramics and all kinds of stuff down there. Oh, fantastic. That's a really good one, yeah. Now, will, will you be at the Authors for Authors event? That's on the other coast. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's on the other coast. I do not drive on the highways, so I don't go unless somebody else is driving me. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> yeah. well, I pretty much travel between Bradenton and I can do uh, Punta Gorda, Port Charlotte down that way. Yeah. yeah if it's on 41, I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> so you stay within a certain circumference. So. Yeah, certain okay. area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's where my books are set. My books are set in the Sarasota, Bradenton, Mayaka, and Arcadia. So that's where I, I tend to roam. That's that's my area. That's where I roam. And that's yeah. okay because you're, you're doing very well there. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy it. I enjoy it very much. I do two, two to three events a month during season. And then I do um, book clubs and things yeah. like that as well. And I'll do a conference if I'm asked. I've done conferences and things like that. So. Now, uh, what, what event actually do you feel is the best for you? Well, what type oh, of event? Uh, I like the Cracker Fair. That's in February. And that that's a good one. That's on Dearborn Street in Inglewood. And I, I like that one. I like that one a lot. That, that one is uh, the best one for me. That's okay. the best one for me. Yeah. Now, now, do you display all your books or just certain ones for certain events? How do you do that? certain ones for certain events? Okay. It, yeah, certain ones for certain events. I, I am the Excel spreadsheet queen, <laughs> and I can look back over the years to see which events and what books sold, and I will take that particular genre with me to see what's what. It also depends on what space I will have. That's true too. But, yeah, this this one uh, November second, I'm sharing with Lucy Tobias, so I will only have five feet of space. So I'm only taking my Florida adult novels. You have to go. You have to go high now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I'm gonna have. So I'll take my Florida novels to that one. If I have ten foot space, then I will take. You know, yeah. my children's books or something. Yeah, well, that's depends. true though, because yeah. if you know, if, if you're only allowed so much space, you can only. Yeah, I can only take so yeah. much. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. you got the, the you go to the bookstore and you're outside on a four by four table. Yeah, you can only take so you know, much. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. well, well, Brenda, this has been fantastic, and it's a great uh, pleasure meeting you too. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I can talk forever. I'm oh, no, I, that, that's Once fantastic. Yeah, I, I did go and click kiss the Blarney Stone one time. So, yeah, so I can talk <laughs> forever. Yeah. 
Well, you know, that that's how we met. We met at the Authors for Authors event. Oh, okay. And uh, th that was, I believe, last year. It could be. Oh, um, yeah, D.L. Havlin used to bring me over with him. Uh, do you remember D.L. Havlin? He used to go over to the Author for Authors events all the time. No, he used to I wear don't... a cowboy hat. I would have to, I don't recall. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he used to go over all the time. Yeah, that, 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 there's some, uh, I mean, all the events that, you know, I go to, you go to, you meet so many talented individuals. I yeah, yeah. I mean, either a novice to experts. I mean, they're, I mean, it's just such a diverse group. Oh, I know. I know. I've met so many wonderful people. I go to FAPA, and uh, that's where I've met so many wonderful okay, people. Okay, sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. I like that one. I've been to FWA once or twice. I only go if I'm winning an award. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I know I'm bad, but the cost of the conferences, you know, well, I only go from winning an award. Yes. <laughs> well, Brenda, this has been fantastic, and I thank you so very much for being well, on the I program. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I and I wish you the very best, and and keep doing what you're doing because your books are a combination of not just you know good reads, but they're educational, and you also. Uh, you know, provide so much information beyond your book. That's yes, what I love. That's what I try to do. That's what I try to do. Yes. And, 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 and you know, people, could, when they do that, they connect your book to, you know, their adventures beyond your book. Yes. And, and, yes. and the biggest thing, too, is that they connect with you, you yeah. know. And I, and yeah. I think keep, keep that up, and I think it's fantastic. Yeah. That's why I like going to events, so people can actually meet me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, Brenda, okay. again, thank you so much, and you have a fantastic day, and uh, please keep in touch. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're very welcome, Brenda. You have a fantastic day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.